<laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, as, uh, as mentioned, uh, I'm Jan Klemko. Uh, for those who don't know me, maybe the most of you, um, I'm a software engineer uh, who's a, made my master degree uh, in engineering uh, and uh, work as a software developer at the software country in Munich uh, called Genua. Maybe some of you heard of. Um, I'm addicted to uh, OpenBSD and I use it since um, uh, 3.9 and contributing um, a couple of changes a year uh, since uh, 5.0. Um, <coughs> and um, in this talk I will show you um, the infrastructure uh, behind bloom.gino.de. Um, how many of you uh, know about this, uh, these, these website and the regression tests or sort? Okay, uh, a few, if you're not. Um, it's simply, um, uh, it gets some attention on the internet, uh, especially on, on Twitter and some and in the OpenSD core developer community. Uh, it's simply just this website. Uh, it's made of my colleague and uh, he used this infrastructure I, I showed you today. Um, and I will have some words on it. Um, this website shows two things, uh, the run of the regression tests and the um, uh, and the, um, the, the, the results, uh, you can see here, tests. you see these tables with the, with the different regression tests, uh, and if they parse or fail, and we had another, ah, back, yeah, and we have uh, these performance tests, and I will, Lost a few words of the, f for this. Okay, this uh, is too, too large scaled. Um, and there, there are some performance graphs uh, we do regu regularly. Um, so let's begin. First of all, the performance tests, just to um, show you what they're, uh, how they're made of. Uh, we have a testing um, lab in our company. Um, it's just um, server room with lots of hardware, and we um, using for the performance tests our own product hardware. We make uh, firewalling products uh, based on OpenBSD for application level gate, uh, application level gateways and uh, and um, uh, layer three four um, routers, and uh, we use our um, our greater powerful machines to make this regression test, and it's, it's pretty simple. Uh, we have um, we use um, um, two or several nodes um, based on um, Kingu Linux because of the um, better performance uh, of these machines as a, as a source and, and a sync system. Um, and we interconnect them with a 10 gigabit link uh, to our product hardware where we um, don't boot our, um, uh, our product system, which is a an, an, an highly modified OpenBSD. Uh, we just, uh, for these tests, we use uh, just the snapshots every night install an AMD64 system and um, make an iperf uh, TCP throughput test uh, with routing and uh, with RelayD. Uh, and we have an um, IPsec test where we have two machines and we measure how, um, how much the throughput is uh, through both machines if we have uh, a middle line with uh, IPsec. Um, and it's just um, from several Linux nodes, uh, the iperf uh, combined and TCP and in UDP, and you see the graphs on the website how they are um, how they are, um, are changing over over time from 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 night to night, from snapshot to snapshot. Maybe some some t uh, some days uh, missing in the graphs, then something bad happened, patch day or something, and then something bad happens. This is possible, so don't rely on the on the um, on the dates in the graphs. Uh, there could be some missings. Um, uh, so now to the main part. Um, the infrastructure, which is uh, um, which is used for the regression test, uh, I started uh, two years ago, um, but not to make regression tests. Um, my colleague uh, Alexander um, uses f uh, for the regression test, but I actually had in mind um, to make diff testing easier. What, what happened is um, in 2011, I started um, de developing a little test, uh, or not a little test, um, little um, diffs for OpenBSD and sent them to the list. And one reply I got was, oh no, this won't compile. Or um, this has this and these problems. Or you send a port and you get back, you're missing some dependency. And this is because um, 
most developers um, use their own notebook uh, to develop the changes and to test them. And actually, or if you make actually when you make um, ports and you're missing a dependency, you don't get it because it's inside the system because it's your daily it's your daily business system you're using, and you can't um, wipe everything from it and make a clean test. And so uh, I started about how to make a simple infrastructure that I have a, a machine by side I can use um, to uh, wipe and install and then make um, my test on it. So, so you can make clean tests for, other, for one diff, you make clean tests on, uh, on one system and know um, if a dependency is missing or if something else goes wrong. Or uh, if you have the problem, you really felt into some bigger problems, maybe you felt into DDB and have to debug it, and it's pretty annoying if you do this with your own net, with your own notebook, where you have to read two mails and you have to read the source code in parallel or surfing and something like this. So this is pretty critical. And not everything could be done in a virtual machine. Um, uh, so, and then um, I start thinking about how to how we can um, make it something um, better, or how can I build a system for myself to to better and cleaner uh, testing of of my own diffs. And um, uh, fortunately, uh, we have uh, a nice lab in our company, which is um, just for uh, for um, customers, uh, not, not for customers, for employees to testing with open source technology. Uh, uh, it's called the OpenBSD lab in our house because mainly developers are there who are testing some OpenBSD stuff within it, but there's also <coughs> other stuff. There are some OpenBSD forks of some uh, uh, employees uh, from us who are just playing around with the source code and making something different and um, bring something out. And what, uh, what I've done is um, I took a machine and I make some automa automatic insta installation and then I, uh, I saw, oh, there's a way how, uh, so there's a way where I can get it um, automatically. And uh, from over the time, over the, the last two years, um, I developed a pretty, for me, a pretty good working system to automatically install a new machine. And then Alexander came to me and said, hey, I would like to um, run the regression tests on it uh, because uh, he don't have hardware uh, and, and I have these slightly working infrastructure and she was uh, or he was the first uh, um, the first uh, customer of this new system and tested um, heavily and I show you this infrastructure uh, in the um, the main infrastructure is are these um, yellow um, computers uh, down there these are pretty old machines so some machines uh, I think in every um, IT company there are some old machines um, laying on the ground in the in the corner and nobody cares of. And exactly this, this machines you can get without any question and start playing with it. And so we integrate it into this infrastructure. First there was just one, just for me. And then um, Alexander came to me with a special, uh, with a sp uh, special requirements. And uh, one of his requirements was I want to make a um, path MTU test. So he need uh, four machines with three cables on this. That's the reason why the first four machines are interconnected with a red cable, so that he can make a <coughs> this kind of test. Uh, the infrastructure is, um, beside of this, beside of this um, pretty easy. It's just uh, every machine with every interface is connected to one gigabit switch and is behind these um, test master node. This test master node is part of the lab network itself and has an outside connection to the internet and it's reachable from the outside. Um, I plan to make these uh, computers um, really isolated. Um, the test machines itself are not connected to the internet, they're not routed. They just have uh, access to our internal OpenBSD mirror, which we use also for our internal development in the company. Uh, because it's much uh, faster to um, to install uh, from this or to install the packages from this server. If you, if you would install it from the outside, it costs uh, a lot more time. That's the reason why um, I use this. And this is interconnected via RelayD running on the test master itself. The test master itself has um, some other infrastructure connected. I have, um, I found an, um, a power switch, or just um, just a power supply, which is a switchable via a serial connection. Uh, nowadays, so we upgraded to a power supply switch, which is um, switchable over um, over a network. 
and the test master is capable to switch every machine on and off. Uh, so if you really screwed up, if, if you're uh, on a remote session somewhere else, maybe in Paris, and you screwed up your machine, you can, uh, uh, at least you can switch off the power and turn it on, on again if um, nothing goes on. Uh, and more important infrastructure is um, the serial connection. Uh, in the test master, there are some um, um, multiple serial PCI cards in it, and we have, um, and every test system has this um, serial connection. So if you make some kernel tests, or if you try to reproduce some kernel bugs, you can, um, um, after, this, after you, can, you have reproduced it, you can uh, debug this thing in, in the DDB which is quite annoying if you don't have serial and you try to remotely debug something or rem debug it via VGA. And it's, but via VGA is horrible because you can't really copy some, some messages who everything have you type, and, uh, type it um, by, by hand. And so it's quite comfor com comfortable. Um, the regression tests itself don't run on the test master. The test master is just the basic infrastructure. And it's the interface I provide for myself and for Alexander and for um, another developer who use it. Um, and the, the test itself uh, and the website you, um, uh, I showed before run on the Bloom machine, which is uh, bloom.ginua.de. And she, this machine is also uh, connected to the outside world and have public access. Uh, and from this machine on every night, um, this machine uh, use my interface to um, to automatically install the, the first machine or the first two machines and, um, and run the re regression test on it. And some regression tests require that uh, it reaches uh, the oh, OpenBSD test machine three and four. Uh, so that these machines are just alive and the f first two get uh, automatically are installed with a fresh, uh, clean snapshot every night. Um, how does the interface uh, look like? Um, the interface I thought, which is pretty nice to me at least, um, is you just have SSH. So if you have SSH on your computer, you, you could use this kind of in infrastructure. Um, or, uh, you just have to um, mention um, the computer on which you want to run your, uh, your tests uh, as a user, and then just SSH, the machine at the test master system, and then the command. Uh, if you type nothing, you directly get to the serial, uh, to serial console and you um, can interactively type in, into it and have direct serial access. If you want to install the system, you just type uh, install or upgrade, just an upgrade. Upgrade is a really pretty nice feature if you have some configuration files and try some stuff and have some greater diff and want to upgrade them. If you make a clean install, you wipe everything and um, you, you lost your configuration so you can keep it. But if you really want um, a clean, um, test, then you can, should make install, and the uh, hard disk is wiped uh, during the installation process. Uh, to don't get um, uh, in conflict with other users in parallel, I have this lock and free command, so you can lock your, your, your machine that nobody other can um, install, upgrade it, or nobody other can, is able to uh, switch the power off and on, or cycle the power, power thing, um, the power supply. And it's pretty, it's, it's, it's the, the interface and you have nothing to new more than, than this. And in the background, which uh, I show in the next slide, there are some infrastructure I built, but just with a, a simple shell scripts. Uh, let's look what's happened. First, um, on the test master system, there is um, an SSHD uh, configured, which uh, knows that um, the users uh, for, the, for every machine, for example here, the uh, OT1 uh, has a force command, forwardings are forbidden, and you are allowed to uh, open an SSH tunnel to the machine so that uh, you're not, uh, if, you're, if you have to type a lot and, and have a lot of debugging on the machine, it's not that annoying because of the um, slowly uh, serial access, you can open multiple SSH sessions when you first um, connect to the console and uh, um, take an SSH tunnel with it so you can locally forward um, to, the, uh, to the SSH ports of the machine and you can fastly um, typing on it and, uh, and debug your stuff or testing your stuff. So what, what does um, happen in the run command? Uh, the run script is just a um, simple set sc shell script. Uh, 
where I um, part these um, these commands, console, on, off, cycle, and the and the rest, and uh, it starts um, the console program, and the um, the serial lines are um, managed by um, a conserv. Um, I don't know. Are you familiar with um, console management? Conserve is uh, a daemon which handles uh, um, serial, uh, serial consoles uh, of different types over uh, directly over phone line or um, or over or a serial card in your computer or over, over USB or over telnet or something else. So this daemon managed all this stuff and it had a client which is called uh, console and if you type console and the user you directly connect it, you're, you're falsely connected uh, to the to, uh, to, to the console, uh, wire these in, these infrastructure, uh, wire these uh, these daemon. Um, and if you type the on off um, switches or the cycle, then the shell script is uh, started with just uh, send the packet uh, to the or make an HTTP request to the uh, switchable uh, power supply, and then it switches um, the uh, uh, the power supply for this machine. So it's pretty, uh, pretty easy. Um, how the con server is uh, configured? Um, to limit the access uh, to the different machines, uh, uh, I limit the access of all the of all the uh, OT users, so they can just have just the read-write permission for its own. Here, for example, is um, is the snippet of the configuration you see. Uh, we have these uh, cards. Every card has the same baud rate. Uh, and um, the write permission is just for the for the own for the user of this machine, and uh, they have directly access to the device. And um, yeah, and it's, this, this limitation is um, uh, is important because if you don't uh, limitate the access, then the user is able to connect to run serial access. And there are some shortcut commands where you can maybe switch the baud rate if you have to, or you can send a break message um, if you want to. But you can also switch the console to another uh, serial access line. And um, to eliminate this, that, that nobody other can uh, switch, uh, that the user don't can switch between the lines, you have to limitate the access, and that, that's it. So it's kind of secure. Um, to give auth authorization uh, access, um, um, it's pretty easy. You just have to um, give me your um, SSH key, or the developer can give me his SSH key. Here's, for example, uh, our both keys um, in the authorized key files. And uh, in front of it, I wrote an, 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 an um, hard coded um, environment uh, variable test user. These scripts, which are running uh, and preparing the machine and rebooting and something like this, um, look at, looking at them. Um, this variable and this variable um, does the the locking is, is the locking mechanism at all. So uh, if some if some user locking his machine, then it depends that every other every locked command um, is just done by the by the test user, which is um, named by uh, by this variable. And in this way, you can also have multiple keys, like Alexander has from his notebook and from his testing machine. They have different keys, and uh, so he can use this. Uh, this feature. Uh, I, for myself, have the two. I have um, multi machines with multiple um, SSH keys, and um, you can put the multiple keys on in it, but you can give it the same username in, in front, so it's no problem um, to deal with this. The machines are pretty easy configured. Um, there's just a directory called env uh, in every home directory of every machine. And it's just contained files named machine, arch for architecture, uh, IP, and uh, the MAC address. And uh, with this information, the install script knows um, how to configure the HTTP, uh, no, the um, DHCPD, uh, and to conf how to configure the um, TFTP daemon to, um, to let the machines automatically boot uh, over network. And if I um, want to plug a new machine into the infrastructure, I just copy the, uh, um, this directory. Uh, I, I, I set up a new, a new user, copy this directory, um, edit um, these files, and then I have a new machine with a new MAC address, and, um, and it just works. It's pretty convenient and, and easy to, to do this process. The only limitations I have is the amount of serial lines on one computer. So, but, uh, but at the moment, we, we have enough. This, uh,
that's okay. So the installation script, um, you can um, run over SSH. Um, it started via the nfdir program. It's a pretty nice program um, from DJB, as uh, far as I know. And it works pretty easy. It's just um, you run nfdir, and after this, uh, um, the first command uh, or the first argument is in a folder, and it reads the folder with the, with the files, uh, which are listed here. And after this, you give another command, which is this install uh, script, and then all these um, files are then in the environment with their first line as, uh, as um, content of, of the variable. And so the uh, script knows um, uh, on which machine, which architecture, which IP address have to, uh, it has to con configure, and then uh, the automatic boot system uh, runs and make the auto install. Uh, what does the script also is um, in the beginning it loads the current um, PXE boot and BSDRD file from the from the from the local mirror. It modifies um, the DHCPD config uh, based on um, these files and the environment variable, the information from the uh, home directory. Then reboots or cycles the machine. Reboot also runs over SSH. It is, uh, is locked in as root user on the machine and um, run the reboot command. Or if it doesn't work, um, it just power cycles the machine. Uh, and, and, um, and after this, um, it looks at the serial output uh, of, the, um, of, of the machine itself. And when it uh, saw the machine run into the gratulation, your system is installed message, then it uh, turns off um, the PIX, um, the DHCPD boot, the, the network boot, and then the machine re recycles and you get your prompt. The whole process co um, costs about seven minutes, seven to eight minutes, depending a little bit on the machine. Um, and if you just type SSH uh, machine at test lab uh, install, it costs you seven minutes and you have a clean uh, installed system with a current snapshot and you can start um, testing your, your diffs. Um, and to conclude everything, um, uh, what do you get from, from this infrastructure? Um, you have a, a clean current snapshot installed into seven minutes. Uh, you have um, the um, current source code available via NFS. It's automatically mounted. Um, the machines are installed with a, a site t uh, tar, uh, t TGZ uh, file. With, um, where some pre-configuration is done. You have also, um, on every installation, you have the same SSH, host SSH keys, so that the, it, it doesn't annoy you when you connect in over SSH over and over again after installation, that you have to remove the old key and, and accept the new one. Um, these are um, static, and uh, these NFS configuration is static, and the interface configuration with IP addresses is static, so you just can start uh, testing. Um, packages are also installed, um, um, able to install from a local mirror um, in, in no time. It's just on, on the local network, so it's, it's pretty fast to, to install the packages. And um, you can start debugging. And as, as I mentioned before, um, you have direct access to the serial console, so if you have a kernel diff and it panics, you can directly debug it. Uh, and when everything fucked up, you can uh, plug the power switch remotely and, uh, and put it in and retry. So, so, and I think this is um, for er, for most cases um, what you need if you make um, uh, a diff uh, in the in the kernel level. Beside of actual hardware development, then maybe you have to put on your hands on. But for most other cases, if you have this environment, you can remotely debug everything and test ev everything on, on, on clean systems. Um, at least I want to show some problems and then some future um, expectations or some future plans I had in my head, maybe, which I would like to maybe um, implement. Uh, problems we now have, we have some race conditions, so it's not, um, it works in general, but if multiple users would um, at the same time install um, several machines, um, it's not uh, race condition free because the PXE boot, um, PXE boot, um, Runs or it runs the path slash BSD on the um, uh, on the machines and try to get them from the t from the TFTP. And if you run multiple architectures or different versions of um, of the BSD uh, kernel, then um, you got in trouble because um, 
maybe there is an ARM uh, BSD file kernel to load and, and some other user in a second later over, overwrite it with a new installation and it's an i386 or it's an AMD64. And so you can, can get it, um, in conflict. Uh, but if you install it um, um, in a reasonable distance and it's, it's okay and if you just have f few users, it, it runs for the moment. At the moment there are three users. It's me, it's Alexander and it's uh, Patrick. Uh, Patrick make um, does so, so some ARM stuff, and there we got uh, final, um, firstly into, into this into this problems that there are, uh, that there are um, in the TFTP directory there were some some kernels laying around which is not for i386 architecture and the machines doesn't boot. So and this um, this is a problem I'm, uh, I'm I'm working on at at the moment. My future plans for the system to make it um, more usable. Uh, I got into interaction with, uh, or in discussions with other OpenSea developers, uh, where firstly more architectures, so um, that we can provide um, um, these uh, infrastructure for other OpenSea developers uh, to uh, have an easy access for uh, other architectures, which not everybody has in this home, or there's just a few developers, a few enthusiastic developers who have really. Um, many machines uh, at home and, and, and testing on, but most don't. And so most don't um, care of uh, if something breaks on other architectures. And to lower um, the, um, um, how's it called? To lower the, the amount of effort uh, you have to make to test it on Spark or on PowerPC or MIPS, um, I would like to provide these infrastructure remotely via SSH for other developers so that they, um, if they had um, a diff maybe deeply in the kernel or so and don't know if it works or not, they uh, have the ability to easy test it with this uh, infrastructure. This is my, my, my main purpose at the moment to, uh, to provide this kind of service for the core developers. And uh, ARM and Spark 64 we have in our lab. Um, Thanks to MPI and, and Chris at OpenBSD, they sent me um, two machines uh, and PowerPC G5 system, um, which are um, which is um, uh, to prepare uh, to get into the system. Or and I guess I get got from Chris um, and MIPS 64 machine, which is also pretty interesting. So we have um, from the alignment perspective and um, from the um, strictness in, in the memory. We have a huge, uh, a good, um, a good test, test coverage and good hardware co coverage at the moment. Uh, so, and the next step is to integrate these systems. Patrick is working on on, on ARM, and he has an, an an own ARM machine um, re where you can remotely um, um, debug on and, and developing on, which you use uh, um, maybe just he at, at the moment. Uh, from uh, from Patrick, I got another requirement. He would like to remotely upload binaries. At the moment, he ha he has a root access on this machine uh, on the test master machine itself, and he log in and and put his uh, binaries in place in the TFTP directory, and and, and boot his, boot them manually. And manually um, added the DHCP config, um, and I think it's more convenient. Um, if I find a way to um, to give them access to just upload the file remotely and, and switch on and off uh, the DHCP config per per computer, and um, because in ARM it's at the moment not possible to make a whole automatic installation because Patrick is working on uh, initially get some boards, some some uh, ARM chips uh, or uh, socks working, and there you don't have a convenient auto installation. So. Um, so if I uh, implement some switches on this level, uh, it would work for, for, for this work. Uh, it would help um, for, for this work on directly on the socks. And the last idea which came me um, for, for Interactive is a mail interface. Um, because the main OpenSD workflow is um, uh, there are people who are sending uh, diffs on the mailing list. And a pretty nice interface would be to uh, send mails directly or forward mails from tech directly to the test machines and they get automatically uh, installed. The diff applied, a build, a regression test run, and if something in the chain failed, you get a reply which, which uh, has the um, error messages in it and, and it says, hey, see there, uh, this d doesn't run. Or if everything run, and you can just start um, testing on the, on, on the, on the whole, um, on the whole uh, uh, diff 
as, as it is re replied and as it is installed. And you don't have to fiddling yourself with installing machine and make all the stuff. So, and so just type it in, and in 10 minutes you have your machine with diff, and you can test it by your own. So it sh should be lower the effort of, of testing diffs and maybe get some more progress um, on, uh, on on diff testing. Yeah, but this is somebody for the, for the future, which I may make uh, during the next year or so. I will see. Yeah, that's my. Presentation. Have you any questions? Yeah. Thanks. Um, cool stuff. Um, you said you do the regress tests every night. It means you step step up the machine, build the IPsec tunnels, do the the performance tests, and then use this the your lab for other things during the day. Um, the web page you said uh, you showed in the beginning that you you said you do uh, some regression tests every day. Yeah, um, with that infrastructure. Uh, with the infrastructure, I, I showed this is just the regression tests. Uh, yeah, it's every night at two o'clock, I think, uh, around two o'clock, um, um, the um, the uh, here a cron job, um, a cron job um, running on, on Bloom um, starts the SH commands to um, to the test master. Then the machines get automatically installed. If it's, if it's finished, um, it, it makes it runs the regression tests, and they're Ready in the morning or so, or it's close several hours? Or oh, it's four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. If something fails, I log into those OT1, two, two, three machines and look what's going on. And the configuration for those machines, I've written the regression tests in a way that they can be pre configured. Mm -hmm. So I've added the IP addresses I need. So for the part and two or IPSEC tests, the, the, the packet run from OT1 to OT4. And then it runs back, and between OT1 and OT2, it gets encrypted. All the configuration I put statically on there, and in OpenBSD, there's a special uh, install uh, DG set. Um, it's called Site. Site DG. Yes, I noticed. Yes. And there I put the, the configuration into it. Yes. And so they all every day they get the same configuration, and everything is set up. And you just say if you log into OT1, say make regress. More questions here? Yeah, thanks for the talk. Uh, I wanted to ask you, we were doing, well, we're also doing the network testing. Uh, well, we're doing the network testing, but in similar environments. And we wanted to, I want to ask um, if you consider to use IP in my interface instead of the power switch. Uh, we used the power switch before, but now we use IPMI because it eliminates lots of cables and a need to maintain another device, basically. Yeah, Thanks. I, <coughs> I got asked about the IPMI um, interface uh, too by other developers, but uh, to be true, the machines we are running there are so old they don't have an IPMI interface. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the reason. Uh, but um, for, uh, for Spark and for newer i386 machines, you're right, uh, IPMI would be a nice interface. At the moment, we are running good with this power switch. It's, it's okay. But yeah, but you're right. There's a lot of cables. So. Any more questions? <laughs>